So yeah, me being an idiot, I decided to put it in time warp mode so there's no audio. It's all right, we'll do some audio dobbing anyway. So this is our plotter showing 15, 16 meters. Um, just see the wreck, that's that red bulge on the seabed. The boys are just getting wet, ready for the Ross to say, chuck it over. Ollie's getting excited. So you can, good shot here, you can see all the ribs that are hanging out down the side of the boat. It's interesting to remember what that looks like because when we dive it, you'll see, actually see how accurate it is. So Matt's just getting ready. He's going to say shout any second now. You can see on the plotter, look, it's right in the, right in the bay, right curved in there. Oh, it's not, it's not a deep wreck. There's someone's pots. We think their pots are actually going through the wreck. After all, potting around a shipwreck is good because the lobster's there. And I'm just asking if we could have that, that flag at half mast. Respect of Prince Philip. And there she goes. And that's Molly. Just, just put it in a half mast. Looks like there's quite a lot of rope on the surface there. I'm just waiting for the other two divers to come onto the shot line. That's Molly. And there's Phil. So uh, the shipwreck we're diving today is called the Fourth, um, and it hit the Petit Long Pierre, uh, one of the quarter miles northeast of Herm. It's a bit weird the the name Petit Long Pierre because it means uh, the little long stone. I'm wondering why I keep putting my uh, orange glove out in front of the camera there. It's just to get the white balance sorted on the, on the, uh, on the camera. Seems to work. I've been doing it for a while. It's not very deep this one. I think maximum I've seen on it is 19 meter. So as we hit the bottom, you can see I'll find something straight away. Turn it over, just have a little look. Kick up the silt. It's a um, it's a pulley block off of some of the rigging. So you see, it's like a metal surround with a wooden um, wheel inside. So we'll leave that one because now I've made it, made it silty. I'll come back at the end of the dive just to film that one. Just look at the debris on the seabed. This is typical of um, shipwrecks to see abandoned or lost, I should say, not so much abandoned, lost fishing gear. Molly and Phil have just tied into the onto one of the ribs of the side of the wreck. This would be the uh, starboard side of the wreck, and the wreck is laying over on its uh, port side, pretty much 90 degrees. So what you're seeing here is pretty much the um, lower bilge kill, like the curve of the shipwreck. And they're putting the strobes on. So the strobes help you find the shot line again, but also it's uh, we've got our names on them, so we know who's on the wreck. So we just put them on there and you know. This is a fair lead. Would have been for one of the more and ropes to go through. It's ripped off and it's just hanging there. And the whole purpose of doing this dive was to try and see if there's any sea life on it. So I've come down the, the uh, from the starboard to the port side 
and this is looking into the bottom of the boat, uh, right at the stern, where it's sort of it's a very tight V. Looking back up again, and remember the um, depth sounder image. It showed showed that part of the wreck. As we come down to the um, prop shaft, you can see like the frost bearing there, which would have held it onto the bottom of the boat. It's, it's come away a little bit, which isn't surprising because it was salvaged heavily by um, John Martell, which is a quite a famous local salvager. And there's me just saying that's where the propeller would have gone to. So far we haven't seen much life on this shipwreck. It's not one I've dived too much to be honest. Um, I think 2016 was the last time we dived it. It's great for beginners because it's quite sheltered. There's a big slack on it. And there's a fair few things to see. See, I've turned my lights off here to try and get a bit of perspective, otherwise you get all that back scatter. This is Phil, the back of the boiler. That's just from up the side. And the boiler's been falling to the port side 90 degrees, and this would have been on top of the boiler. It would have been a, um, an inspection hatch. It would have had a, a, a fitting arm which would have pushed outwards with the pressure. So, I was unsure if I should do this or not, put my head inside here. Just in case there was a conga. It surprises me, I haven't seen any life on this shipwreck yet. Especially in the hidey holes, like under the plates and inside here. Normally you find a decent conga hiding inside one of these. Start at the stern. Now we're going to take a left, head towards the bow of the boat. This is some sort of pressure release valve. It's probably got no commercial value. Otherwise, it would have been knocked off a long time ago. And now we're into the uh, front of the boiler where the stoke holds would have been. That was a little bit of life. Three or four little tiny rockfish. See, I love looking in these, these waterways, in these boilers, because you normally see crayfish. I just find a little tampop Lenny just poking his head out there. Yeah, again, there's no life. There's no real life on this wreck yet. This is where the, uh, the coals are being shoveled in, you can see it's a corrugated. They call a corrugated boiler. And then there's a little spider crab clinging on. And again, no congas. So we've moved forward now. Um, what this thing is, is a donkey boiler. So it would have been standing up in front of the main boiler. And potentially it would have um, run the uh, steam cranes that are on deck for when they're in port. Notice some, so I don't know what this thing is. If you know what this is, comment. Some sea anemone. I didn't really get a good picture of it, to be honest, because it was tucked away. Starfish, not sure what that is, that's the problem with shipwrecks like this that have been salvaged, they're just completely ripped apart, you don't know what's what, I'm just having a look under all the plates, looking for some lobsters, Mm, 
now we'll, sw we'll, sw we'll swim further forward now um, and now we're looking on the plates again uh, we found our first fish so all of them seem to be hidden away for some reason it's a lovely wrasse there's two wrasses in there Collars on these rats are absolutely amazing. Looks like that one's gone through through the transformation uh, transformation into um, uh, one of the colourful ones with the dots on. So this is one of the deck winches. These things you find these these are on a lot of wrecks. They are built absolutely solid, so they tend to last. And they don't salvage them because they're heavy, bulky things. This is where they would have wrapped the ropes around the bollards and these would have spun and you take a couple of turns around it and that would have lifted a, a derrick crane up and down to get the material out. So this vessel we know was carrying um, pig iron and she was traveling from uh, Middlesbrough down to St. Marlow. Unfortunately, she was to come to bad weather and three o'clock in the morning it would have been very dark and also foggy and then it ran aground. Further forward again, so oh, look we can see some wrasse on the right hand side of the screen. I didn't notice that when I was down there. I scared him away. A nice colourful one there with the spots. And they're great wrasse, very hardy fish. But they spook very easy. They don't like a diver's bubbles, put it that way. You can sneak up on them if you come up over the top of a rock or a wreck and just catch them by surprise. Still no lobsters. There's a little rockfish. Further forward again towards the front of the boat and we found another winch which seems to be upside down. And I, what I've done is I've swum up the um, on the starboard side of the boat and this is them pots we've seen on the surface. So they're probably tangled. So there's a lovely swim through part on this wreck which I haven't seen in a long long time. And unfortunately I didn't find it on this dive either. So you can see this is a, a triangle part at the front of the boat. I think this is quite far forward. I, think I, I, I might It might even be the uh, bell because you just see in the bottom left of the corner there, look there's a... Um, uh, looks like an anchor chute or it could be another fair lead but... The little tube the anchor's sitting. Pretty much gone as far forward as I, I wanted to go now. So let's start turning around and swimming back. I'm trying to pop over onto the port side. I sped the footage up just um it's a little boring to be honest. It's so smashed up you can't work out what's what to be honest. Another ras. So that's the deck. This is the side of the boat that's laying down, and those are what the equivalent of knees, some sort of 45 degree angle bits that are coming down. It would have supported the deck. And there's the winch we swam past before, so we're almost back to the boilers now. And this is us, I think we're just near, um, there's like a cog assembly. See these two big things? 
It's almost like the winch off the front of the um, the Vedanta, if you've seen the Vedanta wreck I've filmed. See there's two cogs either side, and then down here there's an intermediate cog. So it's some sort of winch of gear, haven't got a clue. Just forward of the boilers, and there's the donkey boiler that's laying down. The main boiler with its big stoke hold. And what would have been the underside of the ship laying there. And the boiler is rolled off its, its holders. This is quite interesting. So I'm saying that basically it's exploded, but these vessels, when they sink and they got a very hot boiler, what happens is the salt water gets to them, um, the, or the sea gets to them from underneath, and they tend to explode because they get a very rapid cooling down of the uh, steam that's inside them. Look at this. That's a lovely wrasse. It's actually bigger than it than it looks on camera. Really big, bright orange eyes. And now I've just swum over the side again to the um, starboard side. I like to have a look right around the outside of the wreck. Go away from the wreck a little bit. People don't tend to do that. Just see what the seabed's like and see if there's anything there. So it drops away pretty quick. I just dropped about two meters there. Didn't look like it, but just having a little look. This is my uh, scalloping instinct coming out. I'm looking for some scallop shells or, or anything like that. So we're pretty much back to the shut line now. There's another rockfish. And there's our uh, tackle or snatch block or whatever it is. It's amazing that timber survived, but it is very hard timber. So I've seen this um, this photograph of a uh, the back of the boat, which Sue Daly done, and I was going to try and see if it's it looks similar to the photograph she done a few years ago. Now, it's, someone's lifted it. Must have been Molly or or Phil has lifted the pot now up on end. And by the looks of it, got, got the crab out that was in there. And this is the stern. So it used to be really nice, used to have a lot of structure to it. It used to be, be a really good, really photogenic. So that's where the rudder would have been. So we're looking at the barrel, barrel vaulted part at the back of the stern. See down there, you just see the end of the prop shaft. And sadly, it doesn't look like um, her image anymore. It's all come apart. That's what happens to these wrecks. And here's her, here's her image here. There's just some more cogs and running gear and bits and bobs on the back. This would have been the, not the upper deck, this would have been the lower deck inside. And now it's time to go back up. We've done our 30 minutes on, on this wreck. There's Matt. I can tell Matt and um, Paul are there now because their strobes are there. So because I see strobes there, that means I'm not meant to untie the rope there. If I didn't see any strobes, I, then I would have to untie from the wreck.
Take. Keeney's not going to attempt it, he's going to park her off over there. 